Well, good morning, Kilkenny Community Church. I'm glad you could join me. I want to talk to you this morning from Luke chapter 11 and verses 34 and 35. Jesus said, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is single, your body will be full of light. But if your eye is evil, your body will be full of darkness. Take care, therefore, that the light which is in you is not darkness. So let's go ahead and see what that all means and what God wants to speak to us about today. Jesus here is saying that the light of the body is the eye. And what that means is that the eye is our perception. He's not talking about the physical eye that we see patterns and colors with. He's talking about our perception, our inner reality, the way we see life. In Revelation 4, chapter 8, it talks about the four living creatures that are worshipping God around the throne, and they are described as being full of eyes within. Jesus seems to be talking much, much more about our life within us than the exterior life that we live in the Bible. He's often talking about our perceptions, the way we think, the way we choose, and what we see within ourselves, as opposed to our reality on the outside. As human beings, we tend to have this outlook that at any given moment, whatever's going on in our life, that that is our reality, that that is our life. But you see, that's only the external. And there is a higher reality, a higher truth. And in actual fact, our circumstances and the life that we live on the exterior, our consciousness, that is not really our true life. Our true life is built on the inside of us. And this is what Jesus is saying, is that the light of the body is the way that the, the body is given light to move and to live and to make decisions. And that light is not what's on the outside. It's not what we see. It's not what we hear. It's what we've built into our subconscious, what we've built into our inner perceptions. That is what moves our body. That is the way the body makes decisions. That's the way we do things, the responses, our reactions. It all comes from what we've built within us. What we've built inside of us is the driving force of our lives. And this is all based on decisions that we've made, reactions that we've had, experiences that we've had, thoughts that we've thought, the things that we believe. Those are all the things that are driving us now. Jesus's reality was based on the truth. As he was growing up, he was learning, he was gaining wisdom and knowledge of the things of God. And he grew up with an outlook that was totally and utterly based on truth. When children begin to become teenagers, they have a revelation. And that revelation is that their parents don't think the same. If you know your Bible, you'll remember that Jesus got lost when he was about 12 years old and eventually his parents found him in the temple talking to the teachers there. And when they got afraid and shocked and cross with him that he had treated them in that way, he was quite surprised himself. And as he said to them, in, it says in the word, he said, why were you looking for me? Did you not know that this is where I would be in my father's house? And that word no really means to see. Did you not perceive that that's the way things are? That's the way it would be? Why were you so worried and fearful? And then he had this revelation that they didn't actually see things the way he did. And I'm sure that was a revelation to him. I'm sure that uh, he had to discover those things as he was growing up. So he realized that his parents didn't have the same inner perceptions of the kingdom of God in the way that he did. And it says after that, that after that he became obedient, he became subject to his parents. And it was almost as though I think that he 
probably probably began to be a bit more gentle with them because he realized that they had a different perception of life than he did and uh, it then says he went on to grow in wisdom uh, and knowledge and stature and in favor with God and man so he had to grow in knowledge and understanding of the things of the kingdom it says in Luke chapter 16 that the people who were gathered to hear Jesus were asking for a sign but it wasn't until 10 verses later that Jesus actually responded to their question. He said that it was an evil generation that looked for a sign. A few verses even before that, he was talking to the disciples about asking, seeking and knocking. Jesus wants us to respond in faith. He wants us to respond by using our inner life rather than our exterior life to know God. The people were looking for a sign because they wanted proof. They didn't want to use their interior world, that world of the kingdom within. They didn't want to align their kingdom to the kingdom of God. They would rather have proof rather than asking, seeking, knocking and taking the effort to have that relationship with God. His response to them asking for a sign was to illustrate from the Queen of Sheba and from the Ninevites. He was saying that the Queen of Sheba, she came from the other ends of the earth to find knowledge and to search out wisdom from Solomon. And the Ninevites, when Jonah preached to them, they repented, which means that they made a decision to change their mind, to start thinking about what they were thinking and why they were thinking it. So he was giving these two people, or these two groups of people, as an illustration that this is the way to respond and have a relationship with God and his kingdom. Not from the exterior, looking for proof, looking for the outward, but to search within and to live from within. God gave us free will. He also gave us our own kingdom. But we need to align our own kingdom to God's kingdom. We landscape our interior life by the thoughts that we have and the responses and the choices that we make. It's also shaped by the things that happen to us, our own experiences, but we still choose in those experiences. So everything we go to, through shapes our landscape, shapes our inner kingdom. We need to align ourselves to the truth of his kingdom in order that we have the light for our body to move by. The Bible says to get understanding. It says to search out knowledge. It says to take every thought captive. These are things we have to do. It says to renew our mind. This is something that very often we don't do. We feel that we don't have to do it, that God will do it all for us. If we want to improve our external life, our experiences and our circumstances, we have to begin with our interior life. We have to do some interior design and we need to align our interior life, our kingdom within with God's kingdom. In Psalm 45, and again in Hebrews chapter 1, there is this passage that really blesses me and helps me to see the kingdom and what it really is. And it says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love what is good and you hate all evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of joy above your companions. So basically, the mark of the kingdom is loving good and hating evil. And I expect many of you have noticed that throughout the Bible, there seems to be opposites described everywhere. Things like light versus darkness, life versus death, love versus fear, the flesh versus the spirit, those kinds of opposites. In Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 19, God says, he gives us life or death, but he tells us to choose life. 
This is our free will. This is where he's showing us that we have free will. We have the choice. And walking in the spirit is all about choices. It's all about choosing the right one, choosing the right opposite. So it's a daily choice. It's even a minute by minute choice. Do we walk in the spirit or do we walk in the flesh? Do we walk in love or do we walk in fear? Every single time you have to sacrifice one for the other. You cannot have both. Galatians 5.16 says, Walk in the spirit and then you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And it's exactly the same with any of these things. If you're in fear, you need to sacrifice that fear and choose love instead or choose hope or choose peace. You cannot have them both. Matthew 6 24 says you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon and mammon means riches that are opposed to God. So you cannot have both good and evil. The second part of verse 33 says if your eye is single your body will be full of light but if your eye is evil your body will be full of darkness so here again Jesus is talking about the opposites and when we're walking in the spirit we're walking in light and we're walking in love and we'll have more light to live by when we choose love and when we choose peace and we choose all those good things but when we're choosing the unrighteous things when we're choosing the things of darkness then we will not have the light to live by so we have to make a decision to sacrifice that and go back to the things that are good that give us the light so you cannot serve them both you have to choose one or the other and every choice that we make is designing our interior we will feel the pull of the opposites. We will feel the pull of the fear and the pull of the, um, the darkness. We will feel the pull of the anger. We will feel the pull of all those negative things. But you know what? We don't have to go with the flow. We're not obliged to go with the flow. It feels as though we are. It feels as though we have to simply have to do those things. But once we learn who we are as a new creation and we know that Jesus has died for us and taken away our sin nature and we no longer have that sin nature, then we find a strength to resist that pull. God gives us free will, so he expects us to choose in our lives. He expects us to design our interior by choosing and making the right choices. Now he will help. He gives us grace to do the right thing. But he does give us the choice and he's not going to usurp our free will because if he does it totally violates his own nature so he's given us free will and he will not take that back so we have to do the choosing and we can choose what's right it's not about willpower willpower just doesn't cut it at all it's about believing it's about knowing who we are in christ believing who we've become that's what will work for us not willpower so we need to get that wisdom and knowledge inside of us of who we have become so that we can operate out of that. That can be our strength. So you can use your imagination to see what the Bible says about you and to really meditate and think and dwell on it. We don't spend enough time on these kinds of things, but this is how we've been made to see on the inside. Then in verse 35, Jesus said, Take care, therefore, that the light that is in you is not darkness. And that was a strange thing for him to say and hard to understand. But there is a clue when you look up the words in the Greek. In verse 34, those two words for light and darkness he was talking about kind of meant more the physical light and the physical darkness. In other words, he was talking about the rays of light, the light that you see and feel. And in the darkness, he was talking about the shadow of darkness, almost like being covered in darkness. It was more of a physical description. But the light that he's talking about in verse 35 was the light of the mind, the light of the understanding. And the darkness that he's talking about is the ignorance and the deception of the mind. So Jesus is saying to take care 
that the understanding that you have is not passive, that renewing your mind isn't a passive thing. It's not something that you just think will happen. That you actually have to aim at renewing your mind. It's something that you actually have to, to do and you have to do it specifically. It doesn't just come about just by being a Christian. There are things you have to do. And Jesus is saying, take care of this part of you. Make sure that you're not in passivity and make sure that you're not being ignorant and make sure that your understanding of the things of the world and the things of the kingdom are in line with the kingdom of God, that your understanding and your thought life around the whole thing in life is not in ignorance, that you're actually renewing your mind to the kingdom. Renewing our mind to the kingdom is what will change our lives on the outside as well as on the inside. This is interior design. This is designing our lives. When we design the inside, then that affects the outside. Perhaps one of the weaknesses of our Christian life is that we almost throw out our brains because, you know, we think, oh, well, it's all supernatural. God will do it. It's all just a mystery. We're never going to fully understand anyway. But as long as we keep reading the word and getting filled with the Holy Spirit and worshipping God and praying, then everything will fall into place. And that's true to a degree, but only a small degree because the Bible is so full of exhortation for us to get wisdom, to search out wisdom, to get understanding, to renew the mind, to take every thought captive, to use mental vigorous exercise to get that understanding and align our minds and our thoughts and our hearts with the kingdom of God. We so tend to live from the outside and we're never going to get security in life by living out of the outside, by living according to the world, by taking in everything from the world and seeing how the world is operating. Yes, I know we're Christians and I know we're going to be going to heaven, but at the end of the day, why don't we just make life easier for ourselves here and life more exciting and life more given to God by being a student of the kingdom of God and a student of his word and seeing how that when we do that, then with our view of the world and the world system and everything that's going on around us will totally change because we're not living from that. We're not living from that reality. We're living from a higher reality, a higher truth. And then we find that our security becomes in the kingdom of God. We can say all those things. We can understand those things on a conscious level, but it's not until we really begin to align our interior life with the kingdom of God that we actually feel the results of that. We feel the security of being a member of the kingdom of God. How many of us are looking at life at the moment? We're looking at how things are at the moment in terms of the COVID-19 and we're looking at the world and we're looking at our life in accordance with what's going on out there. But we have a life within us we have the kingdom so if you're trying to clean up yourself on the outside it's not going to work because it's the inside that directs our body it's the inside that is the driving force of our lives so we have to work on the inside in order to be able to change the outside in the last two verses of Luke 11 we read how that the Pharisees were really, really provoking Jesus to try to make him say something that they could accuse him of. But it's not that he wouldn't say anything, it's more that he couldn't say anything because in his heart there was nothing in him that would make him say something that they could accuse him of. Because he lived from the inside, his whole world was on the inside, his whole manner of seeing and feeling and speaking his whole world was the kingdom of God which was on the inside now the kingdom of God is not just on the inside it's not just within there's lots of aspects about the kingdom of God that's on the exterior as well but in this case Jesus was so secure and so sound and so honest within himself 
that they were not able to make him speak something out of his mouth that was not in alignment with God. It's not that he wouldn't, it's just that he couldn't. 1 John 1 and verse 6 says that if we say we have fellowship with God and yet we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. What this is saying is that if we say we are Christians and yet we don't take note of how our interior life and our exterior life can lie to one another, we can be false on the outside and we may forget even that we have an interior life, then we're not walking in the light, we're walking in darkness and we're not doing the truth. We're not doing the things that we say we're doing. We're all very nice and clean and well kept on the outside, but what's on the inside? Because what's on the inside will eventually explode if it has any issues, if it's something that really you're pushing down and trying to pretend doesn't exist, eventually it will come to light. And there's no condemnation in any of this, absolutely none at all, because we're all learning and we're all growing and we're all trying to understand the kingdom and to get the knowledge and to grow in the knowledge. And this takes time. So no, there's no condemnation in any of this, but it, Jesus is saying to take care, take care of ourselves, that we are walking in light and not in darkness. So what would it be like if we turned off the radio and turned off the TV and turned off our phones and took time to just dwell on our interior life, to just have a moment where we just think about who we are on the inside. Experiments were done and it was found that people would rather hurt themselves than be left alone with their thoughts. No phones, no TVs, nothing to handle, nothing to do, just on their own with their thoughts. But when we're left alone with only our thoughts for company, there's a lot that we can tell about ourselves. Sometimes I wonder if the monks didn't have a, a really good idea. Now I'm not advocating that, um, but there's something about taking a, a fast from the world so that we can actually discern what we're doing on the exterior and how we're living on the interior. We can make a distinction between our exterior life and our interior life. But the trouble is we're so submerged into our exterior life and into the world that often our interior life gets lost. And I think many of us don't realise that it is our interior world that is actually driving our exterior world. We seem to think it's the other way around but it isn't. And so that's why Jesus is so um, adamant that it is our interior world that we do need to watch and take care about. We all have a different reality. And I find that quite funny because if everybody has a different reality, then what is reality? There's no true reality. I don't want to get too deep here, but I believe that the true reality is the truth of the Word of God, which is the reality that Jesus lived by. So that's an example of the kind of reality that we need to build into our lives in order to know that we are walking and seeing the true reality. Isaiah 33, 6 says, Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. And that's an interesting verse when you consider the times that we're in. But it's the knowledge of God that is going to keep the stability and security of our hearts and our minds and our lives as we go through this season. There are two types of knowledge. Well, actually there's more than that, but I want to talk about two different types of knowledge. One is the gnosis knowledge, which is the intellectual understanding of the, the word of God, the divine nature of God and all things God. But then there is the gnosko knowledge, which is the growing in relationship with the knowledge of God, 
which is the experiential knowledge of God. It is the personal knowledge of God. It is walking with Jesus. That's the kind of knowledge that we're looking for. That's the kind of knowledge that will keep us secure and stable in these times. So what are some of the things that we've said here? Jesus says, pay attention to your inner world, especially in these times. The Bible says it's our job to seek out truth and understanding and wisdom and not to depend on our sensory knowledge and our sensory experience. Jesus says to be active, not passive, in renewing your mind. Work on aligning our kingdom with his, with his. Be a disciple of the word. Be a student of the word. It's funny how we can decide to be a student of other subjects, secular subjects and things that are nothing to do with the word of God. But when it comes to that, then there's often times when we just don't make the effort because it's as if, well, it's going to all happen supernaturally. But we need to be disciples. We need to want to learn about the kingdom because it really does change our lives. We need to choose love, light, spirit, life over darkness. Well, I want to thank you for listening. And I want to just pray for you right now that God will reveal to you the things from this message that you really needed to hear and that he would give you the grace to choose what's right. And I just want to pray also that each of you have a good week and that the Lord's presence would be with you and among you and bless you every single day in Jesus' name.